Today from College Park, Maryland, the second-ranked Terrapins look to stay near the top of the rankings against a fourth-ranked Penn State squad. Terps Nittany Lions field hockey faces off right now on the Big Ten Network. From the field hockey and lacrosse complex at the University of Maryland, it's the Maryland Terrapins taking on the Penn State Nittany Lions in what should be a very interesting Big Ten matchup. And here is why, if we look at the Big Ten conference standings, you see right now at the top of the Northwestern, Maryland's right there and so is Penn State. Both teams with very impressive records. This is a big game to say the least. Hi everyone, field side with my partner Carol Lentz. I'm Frank Hanran. Glad that you're with us. This should be a great game this afternoon. A must win for both teams if they want to stay in contention for the Big Ten Conference title. Two losses is not going to do it this year when it comes to that crown. Last time we were here was last Friday against Ohio State, and for Maryland it was all Katie Gerzebeck, and she showed why she was the Big Ten Offensive Player of the Week. Certainly showed why she was is the heart and soul of this Maryland team, scoring in a variety of ways, so showing such composure and poise over the ball. Leads this team in assists with 11. That is an extreme amount at this point in the season. Goes to show how she's helping out her teammates as well. The starting 11 this afternoon for Maryland. Brooke Cabrera in the gold cage. Didn't get tested as much against Ohio State, but if you just look over the previous four games, she's allowed one goal on 24 shots. So she's been solid of recent. On the Penn State side, this is a senior-laden team. A lot of experience and veterans on this roster, including Kylie Licata and Nett leads the Big Tens in shutouts. Look looking over this previous season against UConn, a career-high 14 saves. She will get tested today. All right, it is time for your keys, Karis keys to this afternoon's game. Maryland, it's all about tempo, when to go fast, when to kind of cater down a little bit. On the flip side for Penn State, they must limit Terrapins corners because they are so productive on those. Also, possession for Maryland is a must. We are underway here as Maryland with the pass back as the Terps. Three and one in Big Ten play. Penn State comes in at two and one, and it is a bit of an issue. The weather, light rain right now, mid-60s. It is a little chilly out here, and I want to ask you about the rain and how the conditions affect each team. Well, I, I think that the rain adds, you know, a certain element when it comes to sliding and diving on the turf that really helps, I think, in parts of field hockey. Where that may become an issue if the rain does progress is just how slippery your hands can be on the stick. They do have extra grips and gloves to provide that extra grip that they can have. Whistle on Maryland, Penn State. They're out with it for the Nittany Lions. As they love to push that pace for 70 minutes. We talked with Coach Missy Maharg of Maryland this week, and she said, we can't play at that rate for the entire 70. We've got to change up the tempo. And usually where that starts and or is dictated by is coming out of the backfield. So take notice to Sarah Sprink, number 18 in the backfield for Maryland. See the series history, Penn State actually leading 2011-1. And prior to this year, they haven't played that many times, obviously, but going forward, they're gonna see a lot of each other. Four of their last five games against each other have been played in College Park. So it's a home field advantage for Maryland, but it's also a familiar field for Penn State. And really only a three hour bus trip for the Nittany Lions. So that's pretty close. It came in last night. Penn State with it, and we've got a Fraction whistled on the Terps. So Penn State with possession here early going. Carly Selkos with it to restart. Right corner in the circle. And it's a violation on Penn State. Turns over to Sarah Sprink and Maryland. Jenna Christmer and Taylor Harold on that forward line are very, very effective for Penn State. These are players that have been contributing to the offense for Penn State for quite some years. Taylor Harold has been an implement into that starting lineup since her early get going. So these two players are very familiar with each other. Number eight, number nine in white. Pressure from Denenzio goes off of Maryland. Penn State possession right in front of us. Buttinger with it. Looking down for Jenna Christmer. Knocked out of bounds, Penn State possession. We'll talk about Taylor Harold. She leads the way, averaging a goal a game. 12 on the year for Penn State. Terps take over.
Penn State is going to have to be diligent with how they press the ball against Maryland coming out of the backfield. They do have speed on that forward line. I think there are some similarities between these two teams, and that's the way they press the ball. So if you're talking about familiarity with how a team breaks out in press, if you go against something that's similar in style day in and day out in practice, that's going to make you well-versed for game time. Good defense by Tapman. Off to Sprink, and Tapman gets it back in the right corner, looking to clear it out of danger. When Sarah Sprink goes up on the defensive part of the ball and she pushes up to support her midfield, Rachel Fush Frusher, mm -hmm. number 13, has an ability to drop back and be that additional player in the backfield. Very versatile in the game against ODU. Just look at the way Frusher possesses the ball. Number 13, who just touched it. She's very diligent and has great composure. Flew Hardy with it. Swings it wide left. Back here for the Terps, Flew Hardy again with it. Somebody lost their stick. And a cross by Maryland, and it'll go over to Penn State. Well, that situation may look a little famil familiar. Katie Gers back in the game against Ohio State got a shot off. That's right. Basically that positioning on the field. Turned over, opportunity for the Terps out in front. And a sliding save by Penn State to clear it off the line. Nunzio, midfield, turns it over. Flew Hardy with it for Maryland. From distance, looking down low for Putch, and it's knocked out of bounds by Penn State. Wow, just great movement coming from Maryland's forwards all over when they're inside the circle, looking to get any opportunity or shot that they can. Kylie Licata must be fully aware and communicative with her defense. Off the Terps, Big Ten uh, first-teamer last year was Licata. She doesn't give up too many, and that's why she was a Big Ten first teamer. I mean, with it. If you're her teammate, you definitely got to rely on Licata right in that. I mean, part of this senior team that has two conference championships under their belt, so that's a very well-versed team. From distance goes out of bounds off Maryland. Five minutes in, scoreless. Penn State and Maryland, I assume you expect this to be a low scoring game. <laughs> I think this will be a tight game. I mean, even if you just look at how Penn State has played this season, this season, they have two losses, both of those coming in overtime and starting that extra stanza with at least one player disadvantage. If you were to change maybe a few things in regards to those results, this is a Penn State team that could be undefeated. When they win, they win big. When they lose, they lose by very little. This will be an aggressive match. Penn State with it, midfield. Lost possession. Terps take over. Oh, dangerous back pass, but Sprint with it. She's got a big stick when she gets in those penalty corners, pushing it forward. Holesboro looking down the right sideline. And is it still a no? It's out of bounds on Putch, and it goes over to Penn State. Lane Holesboro, one of the reasons that she plays along the right side in the backfield is that she has an ability and capability to become an offensive threat. She has speed to get up that right sideline. She has great vision. Show. So look for her not to be stationary. Number 22, to having great possession over the ball. She's already inside the offensive 25. Terps chance here, seven minutes or so in. Frusher, looking for a cutter inside the circle. Here's a back. Cross is deflected. Nicely done by Conley for Penn State. And that's an infraction on the turf. Penn State takes over. Corey Conley is going to have her hands full this game. A freshman starter on this team. That's saying a lot in the potential that this athlete is going to have as she progresses through her time with the Nittany Lions from Illinois. When you look at Penn State's roster, you see mostly Pennsylvania because of the production and athletes coming from the state. Conley coming from the Midwest. Nittany Lions a chance here. That's off the foot of Frusher. Penn State pushing it, and you talk about pace, you see it here. 
Good job by Penn State, first of all, outletting the ball and then just proceeding to push with pressure and with speed. Penn State, by the way, leads this conference and averaging a little over eight corners mm. per game. Maryland may lead in the goals they've had off of corners, but this is yeah. a Penn State team that has an ability to draw the offensive corner. Let's X and O the penalty corner here because we talked to uh, Coach Charlie Morette Curtis and she said, this is part of the process of getting to know people's roles on the penalty corner. Well, one of the main players you're going to see is number five, Laura Gebhardt. Oh! And because the ball is lifted, I believe, and a little dangerous off yep. that hit, that is the reason that is disallowed. But going back to some role players that you're going to see in the offensive corner set, Laura Gebhardt, number five, who's been playing with the U.S. national team for years, has started every single game of her Penn State career. The stick stoppers, that means she's really, really solid in her possession and receiving skills. So that does not count, obviously. Still scoreless here. Great shot, but not allowed. Terps with it. Sprink. Switching fields. Schneid going low, looking for Holzborn, trying to trap it and control it, and the Terps get it back. Just such comfort mm -hmm. that Maryland has when they decide to give the ball to the backfield. This basically resets your offense, and you try to build the attack moving forward. And great cutters, such as Mora Putch, coming inside. There is Putch on that end line, knocked out of bounds by Penn State. So we play 10 minutes. Last time we were here against Ohio State, they went the first 25 minutes scoreless, and then Maryland came alive with a chance and a goal for the Terps. Bench loves it, and the Terps get on the scoreboard in the first 10 minutes. In a game like this, getting the first goal, it's cliche, but awfully important. Well, as we've seen with Maryland, once they score once, they're going to start to have a flurry of goals. Anna DeSoy does an excellent job with possessing the ball along the end line. And then Lane Holsbor in great positioning right in front of the net. When Maryland is inside their offensive circle, they move the ball quickly. They touch the ball quickly. And they have a lot of teammates around in good supporting position. Well, well executed. Lane Holsborough with her second goal of the year. First of the afternoon and gives Maryland a one zip lead. Penn State possession. Now you played it at Michigan, you were the captain. When your team goes down, does that little extra en en emphasis now, or that urgency start to settle in, especially on the road? Yeah, and you know, I think Penn State, it has to go back to possessing the ball. I mean, I think that has to be a mainstay. Maryland does it so well, so while you do have the ball and Maryland doesn't, you really have to take care of it. It's just important that Penn State responds. Responds. They've been able to come up with a corner in the early get goings, continue to striving for that. Will really help the Nittany Lions. Knocked out of bounds by Maryland. Stick with there by Penn State. And Laura Gebhardt, who is the Really the glue of this Penn State team. Four goals, six assists. Turned over Maryland to possession. Here's a back. It flew hard. Into the Nittany Lions territory. Looking for that through ball for Putch. And I think it was a foot violation on Penn State. Katie Brenneman, number 14 for Penn State in white, doing a great job with coming over to the ball and deciding when to step up. It's difficult if you have people that you're facing against on attack that have speed and numbers. And as a deep defender, even as, as a center defender, you really have to be wise about when you're choosing to step up, recognizing numbers around the ball, the counter attack, and Brenneman is really gonna have to be on point with her decision making. Sprint with it. Schneid. Bring it center, turned over. Talking about that pressure that Penn State brings. Denunzio with it. Taken back by Maryland, and Springs just going to wail it out of there and clear things out. I think it's important that Penn State, once they are inside the circle, they shoot. As soon as you're inside that 16 yard circle, you're shooting. Put something on. I think that's a yep, penalty on Maryland. And one important part with Maryland's execution as well as a team they're very very fit so they have numbers ahead of the ball they have numbers behind the ball they're always well positioned on the field for the chance here for penn state 
Whistle on Maryland. Penalty corner number two. Talking with uh, Coach Charlie Moret Curtis. She chatted about their inability this year so far on the penalty corners. But you would think sometimes the law of averages will finally work your way at some point. It was also interesting talking with her directly before the game. This team isn't really into a flow, and they're part of the season yet. They're still trying to figure some things out, and there's a lot of season to be played. Cabrera will take it, set piece shot. Oh, what a save by Cabrera going down to the ground. Fantastic job to prevent the equalizer. Taylor Harold leads this conference in shots with 71 on the season. One component that really allows the corner unit and execution to go is the repetition and the rapport between the stick stopper and hitter. These are both seniors that have been part of this corner offensive unit for a while. Number five, Laura Gebhardt and Taylor Harold, who can come in and rock it. Harold now will give it off to Denunzio, a shot, and a deflection goes in. The redirect, and we are tied up at one apiece. Just what Penn State needed. Absolutely, what great execution by everybody involved on this corner unit. A little slide pass to the side to Denunzio. She's in great positioning. And then Jenna Krismer right at the stroke. And if you notice the angle, the stick angle of Krismer's stick and her feet positioning, that's textbook material. Everybody yeah. on that corner executed that very nicely. I was gonna say that is textbook, the way to redirect it. To beat Cabrera for the equalizer. 1-1, 14 minutes in. We expected a good one, and so far we've had that. Also, I really appreciate the play call on that corner. Penn State has had three corners now, all three of those different looks. The first one, a little bit of a flub, but they've been able to come out with different looks on net, and Penn State's going to continue to push. Wow. Another one coming up for the Nittany Lions. Terps not in agreement with the uh, call, but Penn State will, they'll be happy with it. Another chance here. Also something interesting to note, notice the earpiece that the official has. Mm -hmm. She is in communication with the other official that is located oh. diagonally across from her on the field. So this is something that we've seen in college field hockey mm -hmm. take hold of over the previous few years, and this is effective. This is very effective. So the officials do have communication yeah. with each other throughout the game. That's very good. Barrett will take the penalty corner. Last one they scored. Did the Nitty Lions. Harold gonna blast one. And we've got another one coming up off the foot of the Terps. If you ever notice that Taylor Harold, number eight, is located to the top right of your screen. So if she's off that right post, that ball is going inserted up to her without a stick stopper. She has a very quick release on her hit. And notice now on that corner, number eight, right under that score bug, the top of your screen is located in the same position. Harold, same spot, good defense by Fluharty. Off the penalty corner, low collision. Fluharty a little shaken up after the uh, collide there. Back to Penn State. Nittany Lions, you can feel that momentum kind of shifting, can't you? Absolutely, and Maryland is so effective and quick with how they outlet their ball coming out of the defense, especially on those corners. First it was, I think, off the foot of the Terps. Also may have been a lifted, dangerous ball coming off of the Maryland defender. Chance here again for Penn State, good D though. Frusher taken away. She's quick, she's extremely quick, and she really is all over the field, able to fill in for different positions in the center of the defense, in the midfield. I mean, this is a player that you'll see at different parts on that turf. Sprink. Double. And goes over to Penn State, and they quickly will restart it and get it right back. And you kind of see Penn State right now dictating the yeah. tempo of this team. And they've been able to possess the ball over the previous few minutes. Certainly a sense of urgency yeah. coming for the Nittany Lions. Whistle. Penn State possession. Maryland looks a little uh, deer in the headlights right now after giving up one zip. 
Almost halfway through this first half, 1-1. One, one. Tapman pushing it, not a flu hardy. Looking forward and it goes a little long. Can Putsch get there? And it's Terps possession. Quick restart. Good defense by Penn State in the circle. And it's off the foot of the Terps. Yeah, great defense by Penn State, especially number 24, Katie Andrews, really making sure that she is in control of her defensive territory and mindful of the space. Maryland does such a great job with moving inside the circle, passing inside the circle. You really have to be heads up all the time. Maryland with it. And line left. Possession for the Terps. First Penn State goal was in fact given to Andrews and not Denunzio, assist to Denunzio on that play. Swing it around to the Terps. Nobody's home. A good D by Tapman. The pressure, now the chance maybe for the Terps and it runs down off the end line. Great stick tackle coming from Tapman along that right side. If you just take a notice at this player, recognize her height. That is an extreme advantage as a defender because your block tackle takes up so much more space. Dangerous cross, Putch got in there. But nobody right out in front to try to close it. And the Riesinger is in there. Now with it for Maryland. Good deep by Penn State and Conley clears it for the Nitty Lions. Fresher, good trap by Putch. Opportunity, Fluharty goes wide left. Great job by Putch just keeping the ball on her stick and keeping the play alive, having her body already in motion and moving when she receives the ball. And this is a freshman that has an incredible amount of potential to make a name for herself in this conference as she makes her way through Maryland. But just great composure inside the circle and good discipline too when she's possessing the ball. Nitty lines with it. She'll be off of, of Maryland. We've got a timeout. 15.35 left here, first half. We've got a good one. Nitty Lions and Maryland all tied up at one apiece. Here are your goals. Early going, Holesboro, and the equalizer from Andrews. 1-1, Terps and the Nittany Lions. We want to take a look at the uh, Penn State goal. We're still confused as to who actually scored this goal. Let's take a quick look here. Amanda Denunzio does a great job of trapping it. If you notice, it looks as though Christmer right there, mm -hmm. number nine on the turf on her knees, gets a great deflection. And look at the angle of it. What great, wow. precise detailed angle on her stick that allowed that goal to go in. So it looked as though it should be credited to number nine. Yeah, originally given to Andrews, but I think they have uh, probably figured it out by now. Yep, now they have uh, officially given that goal to Chrisma. It's the beauty of video. Just needed the supporting evidence, I suppose. <laughs> More instant replay. So what have you seen first 20 minutes here? I mean, back and forth we go. What are your early thoughts on this one? Well, I think Penn State's really coming out with a lot of tempo, great aggressiveness with the ball, choosing to really push up. And Maryland is really having to fight and battle to have their quality possessions. Where they have been effective, though, is when Maryland is too touching the ball, finding those open passing lanes. And once they get inside the circle, they're looking on net. But this is going to be a physical match as we proceed throughout the day. Penn State possession, Conley with it. Right midfield. Sprink. Tapman. Out of Hanks. Coming over the right side, looking for DeSoy. DeSoy hasn't had many touches so far here. There's one. She had a great assist off the goal to begin, uh, the first goal of the game to begin the match. And 
This is also a player that, you know, really does a lot of work off the ball to create open spaces and movement for her teammates. A lot of Maryland attack and midfield do allow that. It's good that you said that because sometimes you watch a game and say, oh, they're not doing anything <laughs> like I just did. And you're like, well, wait a second. Off the ball, that's true because the good ones recognize if I can make some space for others, that's a good thing, and that's what you're trying to say here. I mean, if you look at some similarities uh, or relationships mm. on the field today, Anna DeSoy from Mountaintop, Pennsylvania, she's played with Jenna Christmer for Penn State, and she's also played with Kylie Licata. So these high school teammates are now opponents today here in College Park. Hanks trying to keep it alive, and it's uh, going to stay with Maryland. Good hustle by Hanks. And that pass almost taken away, and DeSoy with it. Penalties on Penn State, so Terps with a chance here. DeSoy off the restart. Gerzebeck goes over to Penn State. down the left end line. And then better defense by the Nittany Lions. They take it away and it'll clear it away. Penn State in the past has been known for having very good defensive individual skill, but also applying that second defender, the double team. Just recall from my college playing experience, Penn State was very much all about applying that extra defensive pressure and that might come out to be an important part against Maryland's attack, especially inside the offensive 25. Terps will reset it. Sprink with that launch forward. Again, the Nittany Lions able to get out of trouble, but then they give it right back to Soy with it. Well, originally, what a great block tackle coming from Katie Brenneman in the center of the field. She is so strong when she lays her stick down on the turf. And that's a hard foul coming against Katie Gerzebeck. Mm -hmm. If you come in on that back tackle and you make the slightest physical contact, that will be a call going the other way. A little frustrated there. Two goals, 11 assists for Katie this year. We saw our first two goals against Ohio State last week. One of the uh, better goals of the year, sliding on that turf. <laughs> and that was really a full team play. I mean, a lot of different players were involved in a goal that spanned probably about 80 yards. It was from a free hit that was coming off a defensive corner stop and covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time. That was pretty exciting. Right now, Gerzebeck and the Terps 1-1 battle. It's off of Penn State. Tapman will take over for the Terps. There's a back senior. As we talked about the heart and soul, Gebhardt for Penn State. Missy Mahark saying the heart and soul of our team is Katie Gerzebeck. She is such a vital player. And, you know, it's not just her that's doing, you know, the, the, a lot of the work for Maryland's team. There are so many different players that can contribute. Lewis is in there for the Terps, got a good touch. Flew Hardy and a whistle on Penn State. Quick restart for the Terps. Ten minutes left, first half. Flew Hardy in the circle. It's loose. Oh, what a close opportunity there for the Terps. Penn State will take over. The restart from Maryland on that play was extremely effective. And once inside the circle, again, this Maryland team is looking for a shot on that. You see them doing drills during warm-up, in practice. They are very well-trained in regards to finding any type of open shot that they can on net. Buttinger had a good move to get around some defenders, but then gave it up for Penn State with it. see sometimes the players raising the arms say hey that was an infraction that doesn't get called like on that play Sprink midfield looking for Hanks can she get there no she can't Penn State with possession Sprink has an ability once she comes up with the ball because she's very gifted in how she can read and anticipate uh, passes she gets up and she becomes offensive Maxine Fluharty did a great job with getting the ball inside the circle, trying to find a quick pass. Terps again in the circle. 
Opportunity here for the Terps. Well, just about over 20 minutes has already lapsed in this first half, and Maryland is just now rewarded with their first corner. So set us up here. Sprink is, uh, she's got the big stick there. Some key players that you're going to see at the top of the circle. Number two, Maxine Fluardi. Katie Gerzerback, number 14, who has a great stick stop in receiving skills. She's going to be setting up as that stick stop position. But what makes that really lethal is just the give and go um, capabilities that Gerzerbeck can have with her hitters. Just a lot of weapons up top. Desoy off the pass back to the middle. That shot goes wide. And they didn't uh, go to the top of the circle there. Looking for a strong push coming from the top of the circle, a little lift, and that's one part of the game where I think you get experienced international players that come to this, that come to the States, play in college. One element that they do provide is their corner execution and whether they can throw from the circle and get some lifts on it and drag flick. So some different flavors. So that was the first penalty corner of the afternoon for Maryland. Five already for Penn State. So you can see the disparity there. 1-1. Sprinkling looking long. And that'll run out of bounds. All right, fans, you can always hear from BTN personalities, get programming information, and so much more. Follow the BTN on Twitter right now at Big Ten Network. Caroline's Frank Hanran. We're at the University of Maryland Field Hockey and Lacrosse Complex. Big Ten matchup between two of the best in the country. Number four, Penn State, and number two, Maryland. Good defense by the Nittany Lions, and now a chance here. A little counterattack. Harold with it, the goal scorer for the Nittany Lions. Got 12 of them this year. Penn State quickly. Brenneman. Talking with coach for Penn State. She had Katie A and Katie B. Her two Katies. That's one of them. Maryland saves it end line. Crusher going to give it a good crack forward. That's a run long. That is a great ball coming from Rachel Frusher out of the backfield. In those moments where, as a defense, you feel a little cornered in, you need to collect your breath a little bit after a hard counter, just get it out of your defensive end. And that's exactly what Frusher was able to accomplish. Flew Hardy, he's got seven goals with it midfield now. Holesboro looking long. And I think it's Maryland possession. Leathers is in there now for the Turks. This is what you're talking about. They can bring it back to midfield, reset it. And notice Penn State's press. They aren't putting the full pressure on the backfield. They are very much letting the ball kind of move around that bowl shape in the back. So on the flip side of that, what you have to be mindful of is just marking your passing lanes. And when that ball is shifting, you are shifting as a unit. When the ball moves, you move. So that requires a lot of communication if you are in that formation for your press. Penn State will take over. We got five minutes left here. First half still tied up 1 1. Spring. Both Maryland over to Tapman for the Terps. Again, right now you see the Terps. Is that what you do in when you're in doubt, just give it a good rip? Just to allow yourself to get in better field positioning, that's what Maryland has looked to do. Gerzebeck lost it. Good defense from Tapman. Now back to Frusher from Maryland over to Sprink. Holsboro, the first goal of the game, her second of the year. Flew Hardy looking into traffic. Nindy lines with it. Good defense by Frusher to take it away. 
to lose. Fluhardy will get to it. Coming up on four to play. This first half, knocked out of bounds by Penn State. You notice just how well composed Maryland is over the ball with Penn State's in that type of press where they're kind of stepping back a little bit and letting the ball transfer around the backfield. It's easy if you're the if you're the team with the ball to stop moving, to not create space, but that's exactly what Maryland did not do. They continued to make cuts, spread the field, so they were really mature with the ball in that set. Second penalty corner now. Nittany Lions didn't like the call. Let's see what the Terps do on this one. Second of the afternoon. The soy with it. There's Brink, the shot, and a goal on the redirect! Penn State did it on one side, and the Terps respond in the same style, and Maryland's up two to one. It looked as though Lane Holsborough was actually the one that deflected the shot. And if you notice, nobody on her right in front of Kylie Licata. Usually the left trail or the post will have to recognize wow. that they are down mm -hmm. player advantage, excuse me, down a player in that corner of the field. In that situation, your defense just has to be aware of where the numbers are around the ball. But that was text, textbook pinpoint accuracy with everybody involved. Lane Holesborough getting the goal, second of the game on a redirect. And it is two to one Terps. Just under three to play first half. So a huge goal for the Terps to get back out in front. So Lane Holsborough came in with just one goal on the year with two. In a big contest against Penn State. Right now Kara Maryland's got five shots on goal. Five shots rather, three on goal. And the exact same fashion for Penn State. Two corners in the game, having scored off one of them. This again just mm -hmm. <clears throat> reinstates how effective they are in their corner execution. Coming into this, 13 goals scored, scored off of corners. I mean, their conversion rate's very, very high. And what about goals right before the half? Are you a big, uh, big believer in that in terms of momentum going into the uh, break, so to speak? I think it helps if if you do have momentum and goal scoring in that regard, and Lane Holsbor has already <laughs> more than doubled her production so far in the season today. I think it's a another opportunity for the Terps here. Now they say it was off of, excuse me, it was uh, off of Maryland, Penn State possession. But it's watching the momentum shift now. Certainly Maryland's got it back. Frustration with the Nittany Lions. Down a goal with Buck and change left here first half. Holesborough, the goal score with it. Conley trying to poke it away and can't. Soy with the cross and it's deflected out of bounds. Under a minute to play first half. Coming up at halftime, we're going to have a special look at Missy Mahorg and her coaching style here at the University of Maryland. Get behind the scenes look with the coach. Show you why she's won seven national championships. Was it 27 years, right? Took over as a head coach mm -hmm. of this Maryland team when she was only the age of 25, it's which <laughs> is not a trend you That's see. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Not a trend that you see now in college athletics. No. We're coming up on the horn for the end of the first half. Final push from Penn State, but not enough time. That's going to do it. A good first half between two of the uh, top teams in the country and in the Big Ten. State Farm, State of Success. As there are seven teams in the Big Ten right now in the top 20. Just goes to show how deep this conference is and 
Nine teams total, the, the biggest in the history of the sport. Look at the RPI as well. There are three teams ranked within the top five in their records against ranked opponents. So it's really impressive what the Big Ten is all about this year. Maryland uh, is 3-1 and one right now in Big Ten play. Penn State is 2-1. and one. Your quick uh, first-half thoughts. Well, I thought Maryland did a great job with responding and getting back and understanding that you need to get corners yeah. in order to score mm -hmm. if you're Maryland, but continuing to push. I'm seeing a lot of different players at various areas on the field, and I like that look from Maryland. Penn State, meanwhile, I mean, their defense has to play big, and not only stopping the ball with that individual defense or intercepting passes, but continuing to outlet the ball from their defensive end. I liked what they were able to do on their corners. The various looks, it's just a matter of getting them. Coach Missy Mahark now joins us uh, sideline. And Coach, your thoughts on that first half of this 2-1 lead? Wow, <laughs> I like you say, a, a great two versus four matchup. Uh, incredible athleticism. I love the way Penn State, sort of love, uh, the way they're pressing us. And they're just coming in layers and they leave a big hole right behind that front six. And Maryland has to play with uh, more poise in the tight spaces and shift out on bigger lines so that we can just get right around that front, that front six and then counterattack. We've had a lot of big opportunities over 60 yards and we'll need to finish on that in the second half. What do you make of Lane Holsbor performance so far? Uh, Lane's tricky. I mean, I think one of the things we talked about even coming into this game was being able to have different paces and to slow the ba game down. And she's doing a really good job of that. So is Anna DeSoy. So uh, hopefully we can get in position to take advantage of the self-starts into the front, into the circle like Penn State has done. Coach, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coach yeah. Missy Maharg, Terps with a 2-1 lead here at halftime. We'll go behind the scenes with Coach next. As our halftime festivities are straight ahead. Again, our score at the break. Terps lead 2-1 over Penn State. 1-1 one, one, Terps and the Nittany Lions. We want to take a look at the uh, Penn State goal. We're still confused as to who actually scored this goal. Let's take a quick look here. Amanda Denunzio does a great job of trapping in. If you notice, it looks as though Chrismer right there, mm -hmm. number nine on the turf on her knees, gets a great deflection. And look at the angle of it. What great, wow. precise, detailed angle on her stick that allowed that goal to go in. So it looked as though it should be credited to number nine. Yeah, originally given to Andrews, but I think they have uh, probably figured it out by now. Yep, now they have uh, officially given that goal to Chrisma. It's the beauty of video. Just needed the supporting evidence, I suppose. <laughs> More instant replay. So what have you seen first 20 minutes here? I mean, back and forth we go. What are your early thoughts on this one? Well, I think Penn State's really coming out with a lot of tempo, great aggressiveness with the ball, choosing to really push up. And Maryland is really having to fight and battle to have their quality possessions. Where they have been effective, though, is when Maryland is too touching the ball, finding those open passing lanes. And once they get inside the circle, they're looking on net. But this is going to be a physical match as we proceed throughout the day. Penn State possession, Conley with it. Right midfield. Sprink. Tap it. Out of Hanks. Coming over the right side, looking for DeSoy. DeSoy hasn't had many touches so far here. There's one. She had a great assist off the goal to begin uh, the first goal of the game to begin the match. And this is also a player that, you know, really does a lot of work off the ball to create open spaces and movement for her teammates. A lot of Maryland attack and midfield do allow that. It's good that you said that because sometimes you watch a game and say, oh, they're not doing anything <laughs> like I just did. And you're like, well, wait a second. Off the ball. That's true because the good ones recognize if I can make some space for others, that's a good thing, and that's what you're trying to say here. I mean, if you look at some similarities uh, or relationships on the field today, Anna DeSoy from Mountaintop, Pennsylvania, she's played with Jenna Christmer for Penn State, and she's also played with Kylie Licata. So these high school teammates are now opponents today here in College Park. Hanks trying to keep it alive, and it's uh, going to stay with Maryland. Good hustle by Hanks. Pass almost taken away, and DeSoy with it. Penalties on Penn State, so Terps with a chance here. DeSoy off the restart. Gerzebeck goes over to Penn State.
find down the left end line. And better defense by the Nittany Lions. They take it away and it'll clear it away. Penn State in the past has been known for having very good defensive individual skill, but also applying that second defender, the double team. Just recall from my college playing experience, Penn State was very much all about applying that extra defense and pressure, and that might come out to be an important part against Maryland's attack, especially inside the offensive 25. Terps will reset it. Sprink with that launch forward. Again, the Lions able to get out of trouble, but then they give it right back to Soy with it. Well, originally, what a great block tackle coming from Katie Brenneman in the center of the field. She is so strong when she lays her stick down on the turf. And that's a hard foul coming against Katie Gerzebeck. Mm -hmm. If you come in on that back tackle and you make the slightest physical contact, that will be a call going the other way. A little frustrated there. Two goals, 11 assists for Katie this year. We saw our first two goals against Ohio State last week. One of the uh, better goals of the year, sliding on that turf. <laughs> and that was really a full team play. I mean, a lot of different players were involved in a goal that spanned probably about 80 yards. It was from a free hit that was coming off a defensive corner stop and covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time. That was pretty exciting. Right now, Gerzebeck and the Terps 1-1 battle. It's off of Penn State. Tapman will take over for the Terps. Here's a back senior. As we talked about the heart and soul, Gebhardt for Penn State. Missy Mahark saying the heart and soul of our team is Katie Gerzebeck. She is such a vital player. And, you know, it's not just her that's doing, you know, the, the, a lot of the work for Maryland's team. There are so many different players that can contribute. Lewis is in there for the Terps, got a good touch. Flew Hardy and a whistle on Penn State. Quick restart for the Terps. Ten minutes left, first half. Flew Hardy in the circle. It's loose. Oh, what a close opportunity there for the Terps. Penn State will take over. The restart from Maryland on that play was extremely effective. And once inside the circle, again, this Maryland team is looking for a shot on that. You see them doing drills during warm-up, in practice. They are very well-trained in regards to finding any type of open shot that they can on net. Buttinger had a good move to get around some defenders, but then gave it up But Penn State with it. see sometimes the players raising the arm say hey that was an infraction that doesn't get called like on that play Sprink midfield looking for Hanks can she get there no she can't Penn State with possession Sprink has an ability once she comes up with the ball because she's very gifted in how she can read and anticipate uh, passes she gets up and she becomes offensive Maxine Fluhardy did a great job with getting the ball inside the circle, trying to find a quick pass. Terps again in the circle. Opportunity here for the Terps. Well, just about over 20 minutes has already lapsed in this first half, and Maryland is just now rewarded with their first corner. So set us up here. Sprink is, uh, she's got the big stick there some key players that you're going to see at the top of the circle. Number two, Maxine Fluardi. Katie Gerzerback, number 14, who has a great stick stop in receiving skills. She's going to be setting up as that stick stop position. But what makes that really lethal is just the give and go um, capabilities that Gerzerback can have with her hitters. Just a lot of weapons up top. DeSoy off the pass back to the middle. That shot goes wide. And they didn't uh, go to the top of the circle there. Looking for a strong push coming from the top of the circle, a little lift, and that's one part of the game where I think you get experienced international players that come to this, that come to the States, play in college. One element that they do provide is their corner execution and whether they can throw from the circle and get some lifts on it and drag flick. So some different flavors. So that was the first penalty corner of the afternoon for Maryland. Five already for Penn State. So you can see the disparity there. 
one one. Sprinkly looking long, and that'll run out of bounds. Our fans, you can always hear from BTN personalities, get programming information, and so much more. Follow the BTN on Twitter right now at Big Ten Network. Carolines Frank Hanran, we're at the University of Maryland field hockey and lacrosse complex. Big Ten matchup between two of the best in the country. Number four, Penn State, and number two, Maryland. Good defense by the Nittany Lions, and now a chance here. A little counterattack. There's Harold with it, the goal scorer for the Nittany Lions. Got 12 of them this year. Penn State quickly. Brenneman. Talking with coach for Penn State. You have Katie A and Katie B. They're two Katies. That's one of them. Maryland saves it end line. Fresher going to give it a good crack forward. That's a run long. That is a great ball coming from Rachel Fresher out of the backfield. In those moments where, as a defense, you feel a little cornered in, you need to collect your breath a little bit after a hard counter, just get it out of your defensive end. And that's exactly what Fresher was able to accomplish. Flew Hardy, he's got seven goals with it midfield now. Holesboro looking long. And I think it's Maryland possession. Leathers is in there now for the Turks. This is what you're talking about. They can bring it back to midfield, reset it. And notice Penn State's press. They aren't putting the full pressure on the backfield. They are very much letting the ball kind of move around that bowl shape in the back. So on the flip side of that, what you have to be mindful of is just marking your passing lanes. And when that ball is shifting, you are shifting as a unit. When the ball moves, you move. So that requires a lot of communication if you are in that formation for your press. Penn State will take over. We got five minutes left here. First half still tied up 1 1. Spring. Both Maryland over to Tapman for the Terps. And again, right now you see the Terps. Is that what you do in when you're in doubt? Just give it a good rip? Just to allow yourself to get in better field positioning. That's what Maryland has looked to do. Gerzebeck lost it. Good defense from Tapman. Now back to Frusher from Maryland over to Sprink. Holsborough, the first goal of the game, her second of the year. Fluharty looking into traffic. Nindy lines with it. Good defense by Frusher to take it away. To lose. Flu Hardy will get to it. Coming up on four to play. This first half. Knocked out of bounds by Penn State. You notice just how well composed Maryland is over the ball with Penn State's in that type of press where they're kind of stepping back a little bit and letting the ball transfer around the backfield. It's easy if you're the if you're the team with the ball to stop moving, to not create space, but that's exactly what Maryland did not do. They continued to make cuts, spread the field, so they were really mature with the ball in that set. Second penalty corner now. Nittany Lions didn't like the call. Let's see what the Terps do on this one. Second of the afternoon. Desoy with it. There's Brink, the shot, and a goal on the redirect! Penn State did it on one side, and the Terps respond in the same style, and Maryland's up two to one. It looked as though Lane Holsborough was actually the one that deflected the shot. And if you notice, nobody on her right in front of Kylie Licata. Usually the left trail 
or the post will have to recognize wow. that they are down mm -hmm. player advantage, excuse me, down a player in that corner of the field. In that situation, your defense just has to be aware of where the numbers are around the ball. But that was text, textbook pinpoint accuracy with everybody involved. Lane Holsborough getting the goal, second of the game on a redirect. And it is two to one Terps. Just under three to play first half. So a huge goal for the Terps to get back out in front. So Lane Holsborough came in with just one goal on the year with two. In a big contest against Penn State. Right now Kara Maryland's got five shots on goal. Five shots rather, three on goal. And the exact same fashion for Penn State. Two corners in the game, having scored off one of them. This again just mm -hmm. <clears throat> reinstates how effective they are in their corner execution. Coming into this, 13 goals scored, scored off of corners. I mean, their conversion rate's very, very high. And what about goals right before the half? Are you a big, uh, big believer in that in terms of momentum going into the uh, break, so to speak? I think it helps if if you do have momentum and goal scoring in that regard, and Lane Holsborough has already <laughs> more than doubled her production so far in the season today. I think it's a another opportunity for the Terps here. Now they say it was off of, uh, excuse me, it was uh, off of Maryland, Penn State possession. But it's watching the momentum shift now. Certainly Maryland's got it back. Frustration with the Nittany Lions. Down a goal with Buck and change left here first half. Holsborough, the goal score with it. Conley trying to poke it away and can't. Soy with the cross and it's deflected out of bounds. Under a minute to play first half. Coming up at halftime, we're going to have a, a special look at Missy Mahorg and her coaching style here at the University of Maryland. Good behind the scenes look with the coach. I'll show you why she's won seven national championships. Was it 27 years, right? Took over as a head coach mm -hmm. of this Maryland team when she was only the age of 25, it's which <laughs> is not a trend you That's see. That's incredible. Yeah. That's incredible. Not a trend that you see now in college athletics. No. We're coming up on the horn for the end of the first half. Final push from Penn State, but not enough time. That's going to do it. A good first half between two of the uh, top teams in the country and in the Big Ten. State Farm, state of success. As there are seven teams in the Big Ten right now in the top 20. Just goes to show how deep this conference is and Nine teams total, the, the biggest in the history of the sport. Look at the RPI as well. There are three teams ranked within the top five in their records against ranked opponents. So it's really impressive what the Big Ten is all about this year. Maryland uh, is 3-1 and one right now in Big Ten play. Penn State is 2-1. and one. Your quick uh, first half thoughts. Well, I thought Maryland did a great job with responding and getting back and understanding that you need to get corners yeah. in order to score mm -hmm. if you're Maryland, but continuing to push. I'm seeing a lot of different players at various areas on the field, and I like that look from Maryland. Penn State, meanwhile, I mean, their defense has to play big, and not only stopping the ball with that individual defense or intercepting passes, but continuing to outlet the ball from their defensive end. I liked what they were able to do on their corners. The various looks, it's just a matter of getting them. Coach Missy Mahark now joins us uh, sideline. And Coach, your thoughts on that first half of this 2-1 lead? Wow, <laughs> like you say, <laughs> a, a great two versus four matchup. Uh, incredible athleticism. I mm -hmm. love the way Penn State, sort of love, uh, the way they're pressing us. And they're just coming in layers and they leave a big hole right behind that front six. And Maryland has to play with uh, more poise in the tight spaces and shift out on bigger lines so that we can just get right around that front, that front six and then counterattack. We've had a lot of big opportunities, over 60 yards, and we'll need to finish on that in the second half. What do you make of Lane Holsborough performance so far? 
Uh, Lane's tricky. I mean, I think one of the things we talked about even coming into this game was being able to have different paces and to slow the ba game down. And she's doing a really good job of that. So is Anna DeSoy. So uh, hopefully we can get in position to take advantage of the self starts into the front, into the circle like Penn State has done. Coach, thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Coach yeah. Missy Maharg. Terps with a 2-1 lead here at halftime. We'll go behind the scenes with Coach next. As our halftime festivities are straight ahead again, our score at the break. Terps lead 2-1 over Penn State. Coach Charlene Moret Curtis of Penn State joins us. Coach, your thoughts on the first half, obviously down 2-1. Just, just an amazing, fast-paced game. Uh, Maryland's playing really well, controlling the possession. I think we just need to try to find a way to get to the circle and create more scoring opportunities. But it's an exciting game of field hockey for the Big Ten. Sure. one thing that really set you guys apart in that offensive end was the self-start and how quick you were able to take those. What do you want to see more of, perhaps on the defensive part? You know, I think we just have to have a little bit more tighter on our mark. Uh, we just can't let them run free, and I think if we can just step up and get some more interceptions, that should lead to some counterattacks. All right, the Big Ten Digital Network is now BTN Plus, available on BTN to go. Subscribe to BTN Plus and gain access to hundreds of non-televised games. Then enjoy them on more platforms wherever you are. Get BTN Plus right now, available on BTN to go. We're ready to go. Second half underway from the University of Maryland with Carol Lentz, Frank Hanrahan. Glad that you're with us on this Friday afternoon, we made it to the weekend with the Terps and Nittany Lions trying to make it there with a big victory. Both teams in the top five in the country. Terps number two, Penn State number four. Statement game for both teams, right? And I think the addition of Maryland to the conference this year has provided a lot of excitement in a lot of different ways. But given the fact that this is a team that's been ranked in the top five for 17 straight weeks mm -hmm. is really saying something about the caliber of the team year in, year out, week in, and week out. Good look there, Laura Gebhardt, senior leader for Penn State. Nitty Lions come in having won five straight, Maryland four in a row. So somebody's winning streak's gonna come to an end this afternoon. Right now, Terps up by two, one. Lane Holsborough with the two goals in that first half, and that's the beauty of sports sometimes. It's, it's not the big names that, that come through. Missy Mahong's a big name in this sport, though. Look at that resume. Something that really Maryland is very proud of is their NCAA tournament run. Having made the NCAA 26 times in the 27 years that Missy Mahark has been at the helm of that program. And you look on the flip side, I mean, Penn State's head coach, Charlene Moret has also had a lot of success since, she, since she's been there, almost comparable to Missy Mihark and what she's accomplished. You check out the proximity between these two schools. I mean, if you're talking about perhaps a conference rivalry mm -hmm. that could start to take shape over the next few years, I think Penn State Maryland is certainly up there. The last time top five matchup in the Big Ten happened was back in 2002 between Michigan and Michigan State, and those two schools speak for themselves in regards to a rivalry. So this is something that's really special that could be forming. It's new. And I love the excitement of each coach. Even though Penn State was down, coach was, was really excited just the, the quality of play in that first half. Well, I think the energy and the feel of a team and coach, that, that's very contagious. I mean, these are both vivacious coaches. They're energetic. They bring their full effort every single time that they're on the field. Chance here for Penn State. Taylor Harold out front, and it's knocked away. Close call there for the Terps. Maryland takes over. Laura Gebhardt plays at the high, like, center midfield just about. And you see number five, excuse me, number eight, Taylor Harold right behind her, but Laura Gebhardt right off that post. And this is a player that plays in that high midfield, but has an ability just because of her game sense. She can really be an effective player inside that circle. Maryland, that pressure, Denunzio with the steal. Going forward, good defense by Tapman, and then opportunity knocking here for Penn State. Great initial block tackle coming from Tapman. And then Sarah Spring trying to get involved in the play and hit her foot. But Denunzio, this is now the second time where she has tried to pull left and makes about two to three additional touches with the ball. 
where a shot would be more appropriate, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Get something on net. Right. Try to fire. Give Brooke Cabrera a different look. But, you know, Penn State is effective on their corners. We'll see what they can do here down 2-1. to one. Sometimes you got to take the finesse out of the game. Is that what you're saying? Just... I Give think just keep, yeah, keep the defense, keep the goalkeepers guessing, and as soon as you're inside that circle, rip it. Here's a chance to rip it from Penn State. Shot from Harold. What a save by Cabrera. Still out in front. Great and job. A whistle. Great job by Cabrera with timing how she's going to get down on the turf. Again, this is a direct shot coming from Harold and Gebhardt with the stick stop at the top. And if you notice, that ball was lifted a little bit off the turf, enough so that it will still place below the boards to make it a legal goal if it does hit the boards. That is extreme accuracy and precision in getting that off. Another penalty corner, Harold a shot. I, again, because the height yep. of the ball was above the boards, it does not count. Mm -hmm. But notice how Harold made a single adjustment and actually got closer to the post. The space that's available between the stick of the goalkeeper when they lie down on the goal and the post is slim. So Penn State with it. We talked about the ebb and the flow and the swings of this game. Right now you feel that sense of urgency out of the locker room for Penn State. And Penn State needs to sustain that throughout the entirety of this game. This is a team that is known for having ex excellent fitness throughout the entire 70 minutes of a game. I mean, this is a team that really puts in a lot of the work during preseason, offseason, and just the way that they play allows this team to be in great shape. They do not have a deep bench. Mm -hmm. Maryland has a very deep bench. About 16 to 17 players are rotating in. Yep. Penn State's a very veteran-laden team, too. A lot of seniors on this team. Penn State possession. Excuse me, Maryland possession with it. Carroll's got six shots so far for Penn State, but nothing doing for her. She leads the way with 12 goals for Penn State. Many lines possession. I mean, certainly numbers can be a little skewed when you're talking about the total number of shots and percentage, but this is also a player that's landing 75% of those shots mm -hmm. on net. A lot of those reps coming from her striking on the corners at the top of the circle, but this is a player that produces a lot of offense. No good effort there on that sideline from Frusher, but gives it up to Penn State. Now the circle. Frusher's just going to clear it out. Seven minutes into the second half, 2-1 Maryland. Penn State doing a good job with possessing the ball and maintaining possession inside their offensive 25. One part of the game where Laura Gebhardt is so effective, number five for Penn State, is how quick she restarts. I mean, this is something that really separates number five from a lot of other players in the nation. And having competed for the national team in international competition, the biggest difference is speed and pace. And this is something that Gebhardt contributes. Breaking the press. Holsborough has the two goals for Maryland. Good stick work. Desoy looking up, fires it. I think it was knocked out of bounds by Penn State. Conley got a stick on it. Maura Putch is just there. She's always there, and if she's not there completely, she's there a little bit. I mean, her, <laughs> her game sense, and when she times those cuts, allows her teammates to find her and to be able to come in as a freshman and kind of have that, you know, rapport with, like, your midfields and your defense Ooh. and your defenders, that's huge. Contact, no whistle. Schnei took it in the uh, in the nose. It's off of Maryland. See her kind of wincing a little bit. But they let him play. I think the rain has actually stopped. It's a light drizzle at the start, but now it's stopped and it's just overcast skies here in College Park. Here's Gerzebeck. Good find right out in front. Sliding shot, and it goes long. 
almost looked as though Putch wasn't going to be able to receive yeah. that ball, but just extends her body just a little bit. Katie Gerzebeck takes a little edge off that shot because she knows that Putch is right in front of the circle. And again, look at number 19 being able to get open. Tries to cross it, deflected out of bounds by Katie Brenneman. You, you just mentioned taking it off the stick a little bit. There's that great touch Gerzebeck showing there on that through ball. Almost setting up Putch for the goal. Receiving the ball in space, moving forward. Mm. Spring for Maryland looking through. It, it goes long. Penn State with it. Denunzio. Looking for Buttinger. And that runs long. Knocked out of bounds by Maryland. Through the wickets. Gebhardt a shot from distance. Deflected. I like it. I like being able to use that 45 angle pass on that deep support pass. Gebhardt opens up, takes a look, and just is looking for that far post and deflection coming from the opposite side. Great recognition of where you are on the field. Selko's got whistled. Quick restart. Gerzebeck crosses it into the circle. Penn State possesses and will clear it. A little uncharacteristic of Katie Gerzebeck. That's now the second time that she's in or around the circle where she's just kind of throwing the ball in there. Penn mm -hmm. State's defense doing a great job with having numbers behind the ball and stepping up with some nice interceptions and having an ability to outlet the ball decently successfully. Good pressure by Penn State, but then they knock it out of bounds. Christmer got the theft, but then looking wide right, overshoot it. Ten minutes into the second half. 2-1 Terps. Notice Penn State's press is kind of hanging back even below the 50, mm -hmm. making sure that those lines are marked. Spring for the Terps, brings it middle. Flew Hardy, got it poked away and taken away nicely by Penn State. Chris Merck for the Lions, held in a bad pass. And Snide with it for Maryland. Good action here on the ball. And again, not a good look from Gerzebeck. That goes out of bounds. Terps control it. That was one of the rule changes this year, the, the lift on the ball. Players are now allowed to bring their sticks up above the waist in order to trap the ball. Again, this is a skill that requires a lot of skill and mostly there in protection for safety. Chance here for Penn State out in front. Bodies on the deck. Still alive. Shot. And it's saved by Cabrera. A lot of bodies in the circle, a lot of bodies on the ground standing up. I mean, it was difficult to even find where the ball was. Brooke Cabrera did a great job with having good vision on the ball. Initially goes down on this with her pads. What an excellent save using her stick. That's a lot of ab work right there, <laughs> being able to stay composed like that. Sixth save of the afternoon for Cabrera. Just keep it at two to one. And I, I jinxed the weather because now it's starting to rain again. Gerzebeck looking long. Penn State with it. Emily Errett. And her pass goes out of bounds. Hanks for Maryland will drop it back. Sprint going to send it long. Looking for Lewis. Good trap. Oh, good move into the circle out of the pass. Taken away. Penn State will take over. Good move, though, by Velma Lewis from South Africa for the Terps. 
And just the ability for Maryland's defense and midfielders to connect with one pass that covers a lot of yardage. Their passing is not only high tempo and their ball speed is high, but their preci precision is right on target. Almost 15 minutes in. Fast pace and the game flies too. At some point, Penn State's going to have to look up and say, we got to get an equalizer, maybe here, off the turnover. Good defense by Maryland to give it and get it right back. Frusher with it in traffic, and it goes out of bounds. Quick restart for the Turks, for the Lions, rather. Penn State also getting some fresh legs in there and just taking a look back at this pass at Sarah Spring Thread all the way. That's about a 50-yard pass, if not more. And the ability for the forwards to receive the ball moving forward and single elimination skills, taking defenders 1v1. I mean, that is really superb number two team in the country kind of stuff. Good stick work from Gerzebeck. Now to Soy, pushing it forward into Penn State's half. He's looking for Alyssa Parker, who's in there for the Terps. Penn State possession. Back to Maryland. Gerds are back. He's got 11 assists on the year. That one's poked away. And that one goes to no one in particular. Penn State doing a great job with having numbers behind the ball defensively because Maryland has such extreme and impressive elimination skills that you need to have the support defender, not one, two, or three, but like basically everybody <laughs> right. behind, behind to support that ball or to apply the additional block tackle, come up for the double team. So Penn State doing a wonderful job with coming up with the block tackle initially and then outletting it. Hanks can't handle that one. Runs out of bounds. Penn State with it, Conley for the Lions. And just that little pressure care can make you flinch a little bit and make an error. And you're talking about a freshman defender as well, number 15 in white for Penn State. I believe that was on the scouting report. Oh, nice pass. Good save on that end line. Now DeSoy with it, with the stick work, the cross, and the clearance by Penn State. It's a good job by Holsborough to save it off that touch look. Such a versatile player. I mean, really is at all in all corners of the field. And she's productive when she possesses the ball or passes the ball or gets the ball back. I mean, this is a player that, you know, has extreme efficiency with success. Casey Moreno, a rookie, freshman in there for Penn State, applying some pressure. Now Fluhardy in midfield for the Terps. She got bumped by Gebhardt. Fluhardy, oh, what a look behind the defense. Walker got the keeper on the ground, the shot, and a goal! What a pass, and what a better finish. The patience and the score for Maryland. And the frustration for Penn State. How about that goal? Alyssa Parker, second of the year, gives a little dance. 18 minutes left here. Second half. The Terps now. What a find from Flew Hardy. And then Walker, little patience, beats the netminder. And the Terps up 3-1. Terps now up three to one on a fantastic goal just moments ago by Maryland. Off the cell start or free hit, Maxine Fluhardy is recognizing that she has a pass right through the center of the midfield, connecting upfield with Alyssa Parker. Alyssa Parker having plenty of patience, as you said, Frank, with the ball, pulls it out, and Lakata even trying to get back in the play. Parker just placing enough meat on the ball to get past two defenders and on the outside of the goalkeeper. And what a dangerous pass to allow. I think the pass that went from Flu Hardy all the way up to Parker through the center of your, of your team, your midfield and your forwards and your backfield, that should really never happen on the yeah. defensive side of the ball. That signif signals 
to me, a perhaps a little bit of mental fatigue and physical fatigue that could be happening on the defensive end for Penn State. For Parker, that's her second goal of the year, and that's, that's deflating when you're down two to one, you're still very much in it, and then to give up a goal like that. We'll see how Penn State responds here. Uh-oh, anytime the ref digs into a pocket, you know, that's not a good sign. <laughs> yep, a card First issue. First card. Card issue to Amanda Denunzio, and because of the physical contact that was happening between she and Flew Hardy along the sideline, you start to see some frustration fouls yeah. as well. I mean, mm -hmm. especially if you're perhaps a little fatigued and frustrated, that body control is one element that might start to deteriorate. Coke now with it for Penn State. I don't know, takes it away. Sprinkle switch fields over to Tapman. Now Gerzebeck for the Terps going forward. Gerzebeck still with it. Poked away, but there's Holsboro. Whistles on Maryland, goes over to Penn State. That play looked a little familiar as well, going back to Kurt Gerzebeck's goal, second goal against Ohio mm -hmm. State last weekend, where she was able to dribble inside, beat about three or four defenders. Penn State's defense needs to not be on their heels if they want to have a chance in this game. Well, another turnover chance for the Terps. Shot again, and we got a whistle. Parker almost had a chance for a second. Penalty corner coming up for the Turks. Actually, a stroke is awarded to Maryland. I believe if you look at the replay, ah. the reason that, the reason because this ball may have been going in. Ah. Yep, the ball was going in, hit the foot of Corey Conley. And if the ball is going into the net and is stopped by the body part of a player, it is therefore rewarded a stroke well, here we go. for the offensive team. Desoy, the strike, and the goal. And the Terps now up 4-1 and in complete control of this one. Wow, I mean, so typical of Maryland when they score. I mean, they really do score in bunches. And if you don't respond with their intensity and energy in those situations, this is where Maryland separates themselves from other teams that they compete against. Desoy with her sixth goal of the year on that penalty stroke. And also the first penalty stroke that has been rewarded to Maryland this season. Already mm -hmm. with 11 games on the season, it's not totally it's typical just, uh, that, yeah. you, that you won't see any penalty strokes taken, but Anna Desoy, one reason that number 17 is mm -hmm. taking the strokes is because of her accuracy of coming up with a goal. Great job by the junior forward. Sprink for Maryland, looking for Tappen. Conley for Penn State with it. Guarded tightly by Gerzebeck and knocked out of bounds by Gerzebeck. Penn State possession. Now if you're Penn State, well, you just got to go. Have to have possession. Yeah. I mean, I think and when you do have possession, you really have to take care of the ball and make smart decisions, make clean decisions. Fifteen minutes left. Penn State with it. Talked about possession. Give it up right there to the Terps. Exactly, and even when you're trying to transfer the ball through the backfield, which Penn State has not really been able to do up to this point in the game, what that allows is you see when Maryland does it, you build your attack and your backs are all the way out to the sideline. Your forwards are all the way up to the opposite 25. I mean, the way that you spread the field, if you can possess it like that. Bad turnover by Maryland out in front, and then cleared. I think it's off the foot of the Terps. A little delayed of a whistle. It did hit the foot of a Maryland defender inside the circle. This is exactly where Penn State needs to be at this point yep. in the game if they want to close in the deficit. And if you're Maryland defensively, got to take care of the ball better than that. That was too easy almost well, to give it to Penn State. And we saw what Maryland's able to do even when they come up with the ball in the defensive end and can outlet it just as we saw against Ohio State. Penalty corner here. Eric with it. Send it in. Ready. 
The setup. Good fake to Nunzio. Does it go down? Cabrera on the ground and a save for Cabrera to keep it at 4-1. I love the variety of corners that Penn State is executing. And Amanda Denunzio, who got the assist on Penn State's goal in the first half, give it to her again. She's looking for that far post and looking for Emily Arrett off that far post, the same player who injected the ball. There's Arrett again. It's time. Shot and a goal. Oh, no. Penn State can't believe it. Seems as though the goal was disallowed. May have been an issue of how Hall yep. high the ball was lifted on that initial shot. Back the other way comes Maryland. And it's off of the turf. So yeah, that for a second Penn State. And we thought it was a goal too. Again, number eight, Taylor Harold. When she sets up on that short side, hmm. that is going to be an automatic insertion to her. And I believed it seemed as though, because the ball was lifted at a dangerous height on the initial hit, mm -hmm. it will be a free hit for the defense coming out of the circle. You look at some history and with Penn State, Taylor Harold played with Kelsey Amy, who is probably one of the fastest forwards I've come across in this conference. Mm -hmm. Same type of play where you're setting up that player on the short corner, the short side, because they have a quick catch and release. Well, Penn State now nine shots on goal. Cabrera's got eight saves. That one did not count, so it's 4-1. Under 12 left here, second half. Cabrera really has been solid in net of recent over the previous four games, as mentioned before. One goal off of 24 shots, and when you look at the stats and what Penn State produces on their offensive corners, to be able to come out and stop some of those is big. Reminder, next Friday on BTN, Penn State hosting Rutgers in a field hockey clash. Coverage starts at 3.30 Eastern on BTN and BTN to go. Rutgers with a huge win today over Ohio State, giving them their first conference win of the season. So that's a statement mm -hmm. win for the Scarlet Knights. Spring's gonna just sprinkle it forward. Penn State urgent now. Gotta get something going here. Down three. Selkos with it. Lost it. Goes over to Penn State off the quick whistle. Yep. Good decision making by Selkos, recognizing where she is on the field, moving the cell start into the traffic, into the defense, just trying to come up with a corner for her team. Great awareness for number six in white. Another penalty corner. So if you look at the clock and you look at where they're at with the three goal deficit, you've got to score here almost. Uh, it's almost a, a must have right here, but Cabrera is making it awfully tough. Those big saves this afternoon. There she is again with the poke away. Gloves it out and the Terps avoid another possible situation where they could have allowed something for Penn State, but they hold tight. Sarah Sprink also playing the post position on the defense, doing a wonderful job with communicating, stopping the initial shot and then clearing it out immediately. Time is really in favor for Maryland at this point. And with the way that every single player on this field can possess the ball individually. Is an, is an advantage, yeah. You wouldn't want to be standing in front of that. <laughs> These players don't. shin guards, right. <laughs> they don't have much padding. I mean, yeah. if you really look at it, it's mouth guard and shin guards, but. And Moreno taking it right on the shin. Gets up, she's all right. We're under 10 minutes left here. Terps up by three. Two teams in the top five in the country. Maryland's number two, Penn State number four. Flew Hardy. Good stick work. And we got another card. Yep, and again, you can start to sense the frustration mm -hmm. perhaps coming from some of the Penn State players. What is most important? Because 
of the time constraint and limitation that Penn State has, as soon as you're cartered, you run off immediately. And since they implemented this rule with the cards and having to go off for a mandatory two minutes, what you see is players just start sprinting toward the sideline. Right, they want that time you, to start, right? Right, you, 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 don't, you don't ask, you don't uh -huh. question, uh -huh. you know, you, <laughs> you run the other way. Yep. Maryland brings it to Spring for the Terps. Eight and a half to play. Lane Holsboyle checking out. She had two goals so far this afternoon to lead the way for Maryland. Their second and third of the year. So coming up big in a Big Ten Conference game. And, you know, just effective on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. Very impressive day for number 22. Nobody's home on that far sideline. At this point, Penn State's just trying to push forward and falls at the stick of Maryland. And, and that, that's kind of hard to do if, you already, if you're playing without one of your teammates for two minutes, it's really hard to do to push on the offense, you know, push on the press and try to come up with the ball when you're really limited in the numbers you have. Harold now trying to go right sideline. That's where she attacks from well, but taken away by Maryland. Penn State again continues to struggle in the penalty corner care. Ten of them today, just only one time they scored off the penalty corner. a whistle on the Terps. Conley for Indy Lions. Selkos. Quick self-start, quick free hit, restart of play. Selkos doing a great job in the remaining minutes of this game to get her team some vision of chance. Lewis has uh, had some good moments here for Maryland off the bench. Trying to push it forward. Conley gives a good whack. Penn State with a quick restart here. Harold in the circle and then cleared. Denunzio will chase it down. Coming into this game, Penn State and Maryland have only allowed 13 goals in total this season. That was tied for best in the conference. And obviously today's game might be a little bit of a, a separation in that category. And Maryland so far this season, averaging just over a little one goal per game. And that's really impressive when you look at how well your defense can stand off, but just your offense, when it goes, it really clicks and goes on all cylinders. The soy. Good stick work. So close for Penn State. And I think this is a Maryland team that has the potential to close out their regular season before the tournament with 11 straight wins. Certainly a game that you have to mark on your calendar is their game against Iowa mm. the last weekend of the season. But this is a team that lives in the postseason, whether that be the conference postseason, whether that be the NCAA tournament coming in November. And it's competitive. I mean, Princeton is certainly one of the stronger teams in the nation. Um, and you have to close out the remaining part of your conference schedule as well. Rutgers being one of those teams. Rutgers perhaps being an unpredictable team as you saw coming away with the win against Ohio State. It's Parker scored as well earlier. Worst shot from Lewis that goes out of bounds. Possession for Maryland. Also to note that Maryland is hosting the NCAA championships mm -hmm. this year. And if you want to go deeper into that conversation about what the Big Ten Field Hockey Conference has to offer, in 2015, Michigan will also be the host site. So a lot of news on <laughs> happening that, on for that the blue conference. turf, right? <laughs> on that blue <Yeah>. turf. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, 
looks like Fluhorn, he just got a card. Volleyball returns Friday night when Michigan State welcomes Nebraska. Coverage starts at 8 Eastern, presented by Tachikara on BTN and BTN to go. Four minutes left here. Terps up four to one. Buttinger trying to go in line. And a whistle. Buttinger coming from a very athletic family. Ontario, Canada, one of seven siblings, and those siblings are quite athletic. Her sister plays at Duke. Her other sister is on the indoor Canadian national team. And this is a player that didn't start playing the sport of field hockey until she was a freshman in high school wow. and has now earned her way onto the Penn State roster. That's pretty incredible. <laughs> Penalty corner here, Penn State. Gotta get something here. Harold. There it is. Cuts the lead in half. Three minutes left. First goal of the afternoon for her. 13th of the year. This time that one counted. And if at first you don't succeed on this corner, hey, let's try again. Harold, you noticed how she takes her time. Yep. The fly or the rush coming from Maryland's defense gave her enough time that she really took her time with getting a good strike on the ball. Great placement. And when you're on that corner offensive unit, you hear those boards. It's got to bring, oh, yeah. bring a big smile to your face. It was her sixth shot of the game. She scores it off that penalty corner. Bad turnover here. Still time for Penn State. Many Lions possession. Two and a half left. Ball still loose. Buttinger doing a great job with continuing to move the ball inside the circle, giving her team a pretty good opportunity to come up with a corner. Char Moret calling a timeout, mm -hmm. trying to formulate something that can bring this Penn State team within one goal. So what do you do here if you're down two? You're just going all out, just everybody go for it? How's the, what's the, uh, What's the plan here? I think you want to have the ball in possession by certain players. Buttinger was doing a great job with possessing it. Lord Gebhardt might be over this free hit, or she might be trying to create uh, an opening just a little bit outside the circle. It's a smart move by Char Moret as a head coach to strategize. All right, let's look at our uh, Pure Silk performance of the match. Brooke Cabrera coming through big time this afternoon. This player has just been so solid of recent, effective on the corners, especially against an arsenal of strikers from the top, such as Taylor Harold. And this is an excellent, excellent save coming from Cabrera. Gets on the ground, stops it with her stick, but not only that, has the ability to get back up, find the ball, have good vision of the ball, just a solid performance. Nine saves on the day. Certainly worthy of the Pure Silk performance of the match. Brooke Cabrera, the senior. Nine saves, still 2.20 left. She'll retreat. It is Penn State possession here, Missy Maharg now. Trying to hold down the fort here for the final 2.20. Lot of accolades this past week for Maryland, Big Ten players of the week. Katie Gerzebeck on the offensive side. We mentioned Cabrera with a great game. And Maura Putch, rookie of the week again. Another turnover. Harold with it, just scored that goal to cut it to two. Ah, Penn State knocked out of bounds by Maryland. Indy Lions possession. Selkos drawing it. So Look, Maryland's not doing themselves any favors here. Looking like actually a, a very clean block tackle coming from Frusher. Just outside the circle, the ball may have hit her foot, hence the corner, but that looked like to be a very clean tackle. Yeah. Penn State, they've been able to possess the ball inside their offensive 25 for the greater part of the remaining four to five minutes. 
Emily Eret, the sophomore from Philly, sets it up. The shot. Oh, Cabrera on the deck. Score! We got a one-goal game with 1.15 left. Danger zone. You could feel it with that penalty. Corner. And there is plenty of time in this one. Well, you can expect that that initial shot is going to be coming from Taylor Harold. She gets a little lift on it over the flyer stick and Maxine Fluharty and Amanda Denunzio. How effective can she be on this corner offensive unit? Assisted on the first goal, has come up big in other sets or notations on the corner unit. And wow, being able to find the back of the net. So it's a one goal game now. Moments ago it was 4-1. What, what's coach saying right now to the Terps? Possess the ball, get the ball in your offensive 25 play. I mean, this team prides themselves on having a very high work ethic, and you really have to push to the absolute end of the game. A three goal lead in conference is not comfortable. And also a Penn State really taking their free hits quickly inside their offensive 25. They, they were pushing, they were setting the tempo and the pace. And that's really what enabled them to come up with some looks such as an offensive corner unit. Great save initially by Cabrera, but the defense not marking up or stepping out after that initial save. It's one thing to stop the first shot. It's another thing to follow that up and make sure that that ball is cleared out. Oh, you can see it right there. Miscommunication, Penn State, even though they're down one, playing with a lot of confidence right now, but time is a factor. Just a minute left in this one. Penn State trails by one. And again, looking looking for any small fraction or foul inside the circle. If they can come up for, yeah. with the corner, that's going to be huge for the Nittany Lions. 50 seconds left. If you're Maryland, that changes the way you almost have to think defensively, not to make any mistakes. Definitely adds a little pressure on the defense. Penn State didn't like the call. Now the clock continues to run. We're down to 30 seconds left in this one. Desoy with it for the Terps. Schneid into the midfield. Flew Hardy for the Maryland Terrapins. Triple Tim, oh great move to create space and kill time. And that might do it. In the situation like that, you certainly want a player that possesses the ball and has great elimination skills. Flew Hardy beat about three defenders with one drop step. And there it is. Maryland holding off a late rally from Penn State to win it four to three. As Missy Mahar's gotta be happy with getting that W over Penn State. Lane Holsborough leading the way for Maryland. Two goals for the Terps, her second and third of the season, and she came up big this afternoon. Holsborough in great supportive positioning right inside the circle, and then her, tip, her trend throughout the season, Maryland and how they convert on their corners. Holsborough had great angle on her stick, found the top of the net to be able to walk away from this game with two goals and another win in conference play. Terps improved to four and one in the Big Ten, knocking off Penn State. Terps win it 4-3.